Hi class, I'm, I'm coming to you today from my uh, local library as it were and uh, I wanted to show you a little something. We're going to talk about wages and um, in order to do that I want to first talk about this document that I have here before me. It's, um, it's a 230 some odd year old manuscript from the 1700s and it was uh, owned by a man named Jealous Fonda and uh, Jealous Fonda owned a store in Fonda, that's where, where the town is named from and um, I want to talk about this here document. It's, uh, it's all written in pounds, shillings and pence because that was the currency in, in New York State in the uh, 1770s and uh, I want to talk about exactly what this document is and how it relates to an understanding of wages and uh, so let me just um, get this all set up and we'll take a quick look at it, okay? We see on January 17th, by cutting 15 cords of wood, a man named Edward Parker got paid two pounds five shillings. That's quite a lot. That's actually 45 shillings for 15 cords of wood. So he got paid three shillings for every cord of wood. And typically speaking, people got paid by what they worked not by the number of hours or the days, but let's look at some day laborers. Here, John Bullman worked for half a day on February 3rd, 17072, and he got paid two and a half shillings. Now here, on one day's work, he got paid five shillings. So he was working for five shillings a day. Three days of carpentering, five a day, 15 shillings. So he worked for roughly five shillings a day. Peter Cornelius was perhaps not so uh, effective back in May of 1772. He worked uh, one day by himself and got three shillings. His uh, relative, presumably, uh, Derek uh, Dingman and Jacob Dingman, each worked for three shillings a, a day. So the work that they did was not so good, although Brum here, he made four and a half shillings. So he apparently worked a little bit harder than the rest of the family. Peter Cooley, on, her, on the other hand, he had one day of riding ashes, that's potash, and he made eight shillings for one day's work. But he was riding ashes, presumably to town, probably to Albany. Here we see Robert Milligan. For one day working about the hay, he made three and a half shillings, but for one and a half days digging a well, he made four and a half shillings. So for digging well, he got paid three shillings a day, but for working the hay, he got three and a half shillings a day. Now we're going to talk about Stephen Kane. He um, had one day working about the ha ashes. He got paid two and a half shillings. He wasn't riding those ashes. He was just helping about them. And um, here, controversial, one day of your wife to wash. She got paid one shilling. So where a typical day's labor was anywhere from two and a half to five shillings, the wife only got paid one. One day of your wife for one shilling. Two days of yourself, five shillings. So Stephen Kane made a lot less than some of the other men, but a lot more than his wife. But his wife was only doing the wash, just so you understand how that worked out in colonial America. Now, the reason why I uh, pointed all this stuff out to you is not to point out that women make less money than men for a job, but to point out that, especially in colonial America, each job got paid a different wage. Whether you were riding ashes, helping about the ashes uh, on the farm, whether you were, were helping about the hay, <clears throat> there was um, cutting cords of wood. Coopering actually brought in about five shillings a day. That was one of the higher paid ones. So the point I want to make is productivity and, and value. Oftentimes it's the, the percent of people who can do the job Coopering, there are very few people who could do that. That's going to pay more. That's the supply of laborers versus helping about the ashes, <clears throat> which presumably anybody could have done. Um, helping about the wash, that is doing someone's laundry, obviously that was a, a less skilled and less physical work, and therefore, uh, not to say it wasn't physical, but compared to, to other alternatives like uh, loading stone, which was one of the jobs that they had there. So what you have is people get paid based on A, their productivity, their value added. Uh, riding a, a whole load of ashes to Albany meant that uh, 
then Mr. Fonda could make some money by uh, selling that ash. So he needed to get it there. He needed somebody to do it. He couldn't physically do it every day. He had to pay a, a, a going rate. So that's where productivity and the supply of labor are tied to actual prices. That's the point. In theory, without being insulting, any of the housewives could have done the laundry. So there was a huge supply of labor available for that one shilling. Now, that said, how does that work with today, where we have a government that insists that it knows best on how, much, how productive someone is, that it's going to raise the minimum wage simply because someone is not making enough money at that wage? Well, we all have to decide how to spend our money and um, we can live in a mansion, we can live in a shack. They're, those are some of our choices. But in addition to that, we don't get paid based on how much we want to spend. We get paid based on how productive we are. At least in economic theory, that's what happens.